In this video, I'll be going over how to identify family Muridae and family Cricetidae. Family Muridae are the old world mice and rats, meaning from um, Asia, Africa, Europe. Cricetidae, the new world mice and rats, meaning from North and South America. So first of all, let's talk about the skins because that's gonna be a little easier. two mice here. I have a house mouse and a deer mouse. Generally, the easiest way to distinguish um, between these is the color. So if you look at this, you can see that there's a white belly, a dark back. We call that counter shading, meaning there's a really strong difference between a lighter belly and a darker back. If you look at the house mouse, it is a little lighter on the belly than on the back, but there's not really a strong line and a strong differentiation. If we look at our larger rats, it's the same thing. Where here we have our pack rat with the white belly and like a line. And here we have a rat that is less distinctively two colors. If you look at any of the New World species, so the kangaroo rat, the pocket mouse, the um, jumping mouse, and all these things that I'm gonna talk about in a bit, they all have that counter shape. Um, our old world mice and rats also have scaly tails, but our new world, some of them have scaly and some of them have furred. So that can help, but it's not the only indicator. For the skulls, it's a little trickier. So, we're looking at our old world. These have three over three cheek teeth, so three upper, three lower. We're not differentiating between premolars and molars. But so that's the same number as this group over here of Crescentidae. This one has a little different style teeth, so you're going to get it most confused with these three because the teeth look similar to, say, the house mouse. And that's going to be probably the one you most confuse it with because the um, other rat larger. So we have our three here. Um, now to look at the skulls, this is a little hard to explain. Um, there is a photo in the PowerPoint that I give my lecture over and hopefully you can see it in the actual videos, sorry, in the gallery. But the difference here is in Muridae, the cheek teeth have three tubercle rows versus in uh, Crescentidae where they have two tubercle rows. Now what that means is looking at the tooth kind of top down, there are bumps, like there are bumps on our teeth. And there are either bumps along the edge in the middle and on the other edge, or bumps on either edge of the tooth with kind of a valley in the center. This is hard for me to hold up um, pictures, so it's difficult to explain, but hopefully it makes sense when you actually see the pictures that either there are bumps in the center because there are three rows, this is the terminology that he uses, or there's a valley kind of going down, up and down the tooth with bumps on either side with the two rows. So then, let's say we figured out that it is family Muridae because it has those three rows of bumps. Our two species that we're looking at are Rats norvegicus and Mus musculus, mouse and rat. Now the biggest difference is going to be the size. As you can tell from the skins here, the rats are larger than mice. Um, the other thing for rat skulls they often have really prominent temporal ridges. So you can see these things that kind of look like eyebrows, just these really strong ridges. That's something that rats often have. Okay, so now let's talk about family Crescentidae. I have subfamilies 
listed here because within Crescidae it's a really large family and there are very distinctive groups. So I won't ask you the subfamily on the exam, but this is a useful way of categorizing things within this larger family. So subfamily Sigmatinae are the things that look like mice. So we have Brythrogonomies, I forgot to write the species, Megalotus, this is the harvest mouse, Onychomys lupicaster, this is the grasshopper mouse, Paramiscus maniculas, this is the deer mouse. So these all, they look like mice. Talking about the skins, one way to distinguish them is that Onychomys, this grasshopper mouse, has a much shorter tail than the other two. So you can see just how short this tail is versus the other ones. With the two other mice, then the difference is looking at the tail. The right is this hardest mouse, the tail has scales versus paramiscus. The tail has fur, and especially notable for paramiscus is the tail is distinctively bicolored, meaning its counter shading is not just the belly, but it has a tail that's dark on the top, light on the bottom. So long tail and dark with light, this is our genus. Let's stop and think a bit about how you might want to ID this if you get this specimen on an exam. So you don't know automatically, well maybe you do know that this is a deer mouse, but you might want to think, is it a pocket mouse? Does it have pockets? No. Is it a, um, is it a, a jumping mouse? Does it have a super, super long tail with tail scales? No. Is this a house mouse? Does it have weak counter shading? It has strong counter shading. Okay, so then that leaves it as one of these three. Also, it's not a bowl, which we'll talk about next video. And then you look at the tail, longer tail, and the tail is strongly bicolored. Ta-da, it's paramiscus. That type of process of elimination and kind of working through this is what you're gonna really need to know for the exam. And I would suggest thinking about how to do the skins and separately how to do the skulls because you'll have one or the other and they're kind of different pathways to get to the answer. All right, so talk about the skins for these. For the skulls then, the harvest mouse has a group incisor, which I've mentioned before in the other video versus these other two do not have a groove inside it. So that's the difference there. For these two that have similar teeth, you've looked at the rows of tubercles and figured it out, it doesn't have a perforated nasal septum, it doesn't have a large infraorbital form in it, it's one of these two, that's it. Then we look at the lower jaw, and specifically the coronoid process. So if this is a side view of the jaw, this bit sticking up right there is going to be a lot, lot longer on the grasshopper mouse than on the deer mouse. And that's how you can tell these skulls apart. Last species I want to talk about then is subfamily Neotomine. So this is its own different group. It has its own weird looking teeth. Neotoma cinera has three upper incisors and three lower incisors, but that might be hard to tell because the teeth look really strange. These have flat crowned prismatic teeth. I mentioned prismatic teeth last week, so if you're looking top down, you can see a little outline on the surface of the tooth. And if you look from the side, you see that they're completely flat. There's no bumps. This should sound familiar because this is like what we saw in the um, pocket gopher last week. So how do you tell this apart from a pocket gopher? Well, the main way is that this is myomorphic, so it has those vertical, ridge, or vertical slits, versus the sciuromorphic flat plate of the pocket gopher. And another way is just that this has a lot um, more kind of jagged back and forth um, prismatic teeth versus the simple circles of the pocket gopher. 
next week. Um, I'll talk about this more because there are a number of species with prismatic teeth, so we need to compare this to Gomomi's proxy book from last week, but also next week, all of the species that we'll look at, on Dapter, the muskrat, and a bunch of voles, all have prismatic teeth. So um, I'll mention ways to differentiate the different prismatic teeth next week, but for now, this is the only one this week that has these crazy teeth. And what to forget, here is the Neotoma sonera skin, the um, bushy-tailed wood rat, or pack rat, and it is very strongly uh, countershaded. It's large, and it has a bushy tail. So I think this one should be not too difficult to figure out. 